friends. This is Roja Scheib, your moderator for this chat. And I have many thoughts and feelings about the season finale of Mr. Robot Season 3, Episode 10, Shutdown. I had to sit with this one a little bit. I've watched it twice. Um, I want to say I was disappointed. I was just very surprised with some of the, the, the basic changes in the tenor of the change of the show. Um, I'm a little conflicted on where the direction of the show is going. Um, is it a reset or is it like this kind of weird circle loop thing that they're doing? And I'll get more into that. Um, overall, I still think it was very good. I still think it fit within the storyline. I think for the most part, um, the characters did make the choices that, you know, we've known them to have to be made. They weren't, you know, too out of the box or jump the shark or anything like that. And we'll, we'll talk about a potential jump the shark moment. But for the most part, I, you know, I did enjoy the episode. Um, I think because after a scene, and it's not a spoiler, but I did see the, the latest Star Wars movie. I think what it is is that I slowly can begin to accept or di the disappointment of my heroes, if you will. The flaws. Not that Elliot and Darlene or any on the, anybody on this show is a hero. Except maybe Dom. Uh, but for the most part, <laughs> I think that the, the flaws that they show, that have been showing on the show are excellent and great. Um, I think that the show is very more reality based than people realize. And what I mean by reality based and not like grounded, like the it's set in our time and aesthetics and people are dressing and talking when they are legal. I mean like this is what would really happen in the real world. You start a revolution and it gets co opt and co opt and destroyed, basically. Um, look at what happened to Occupy Wall Street, look what happened to uh, even some extent, whether we were not even the political movement, the American Tea Party movement, uh, what happened with the Arab Spring, and then the it, Egypt, biggest example, uh, what happened there uh, in the Ukraine. A lot of these different revolutionary moments that had this very big apex of taking down uh, a particular issue, addressing a particular issue, and taking down a problem, but they didn't get it, end up getting either co opted by the infrastructure and marginalized again or put in a box or they are destroyed in essence uh, from either from within or just being out played or out maneuvered if you will which is very much as it seems the case with F society they were outplayed and out maneuvered so I think that with what went on with this episode is very much based in the reality I'm just not sure with this whole reset concept of Elliot you know taking up the cause again is I don't know. I don't know. But let's, let's go on. Um, you know, the episode opens up with the Dark Army showing up at Ellie's apartment. They search for him. They couldn't find him. Grant is the one leading the chase. Elliot is hiding out in Shayla's old apartment. And uh, they eventually leave. They have to find him, in essence. And... Elliot's beginning to realize that, you know, his stage three fake out is, you know, crumbling. So if they're looking for him, they're going to look for Darlene. And he needs to get, you know, get with Darlene. Well, meanwhile, Darlene's in the FBI custody with the mole Santiago, which Elliot knows but doesn't know that there's a mole, if you will. Um, I think it's a little confusing sometimes with his personality stuff. Uh, but they focused on... And I guess I was kind of right with my uh, predictions about that CD case because uh, the emphasis on it. I just didn't realize where the spin would be, and that was the blank disc, um, which I will get into when we get to that point. But they, the, the opening credits, they always have a very strong opening credits with uh, Mr. Robot, and they, they just superimpose the Mr. Robot title on that blank disc, and we now know how extra important that blank disc was because before during season one the blank disc showed the pictures of Elliot's false you know real memories that he had basically hidden from himself about you know Darlene was his sister um, a little bit about his father and mother and stuff like that you know that's what Mr. Robot was the image of Mr. Robot was in fact his father and things of that nature so 
he goes back to the fun society, hang out, hide out. That's the rendezvous point. Darlene's not there. She's not answering his text. Text. He's panicking. He could see that he still has control of the dark army servers, or at least has his foot in the door, if you will. Um, but there's too much data for him to call through right now, and he needs to think. He needs to come up with a plan. Uh, he's panicking. He's you know, kind of a little violent, a uh, little self harm here, and. He's kind of breaking down. He's, you know, he's run out of moves in essence. He's need to sit down and figure out what the next move is because Darlene is within FBI custody. And so he has a conversation with Mr. Robot and they start conversating about, you know, everything basically. Um, their state of the relationship, uh, how to save Darlene, what to do next. The most important part is, you know, Elliot acknowledging that Mr. Robot is a part of him. Uh, part of him is in, in me, you know, and a part of me is in you. About this personality, this tug of war that they've been having, uh, this lack of communication. Uh, he asked Mr. Robot directly, would he have gone with the 71 building plan if he knew about it? And he said yes, which means that Elliot would have gone with the, the 71 building plan if he knew about it. Um, so that part of himself, that darkness is in him. Uh, but Elliot says he would have found a different way. He would have found a, a better solution, you know, if he knew about it. And even Mr. Robot acknowledges this at some point. So he asks Mr. Robot to help him to save Darlene. Uh, you know, Dar Mr. Robot's still trying to keep the cause going, but it's, it's slowly waxing and waning away. Uh, so he tells him what Tyra Wellick told him, that there's a mole in the FBI. And that, you know, basically Darlene is very much in trouble. And they need to figure it out. Uh, he tells them who the mole is. They go to the mole's apartment, uh, Santiago, and they're looking for information. And this is where um, they have the conversation about looking for, you know, the information about where to go. And they find, you know, a red wheelbarrow menu with a cipher encryption. Um, that Santiago didn't keep things online. He kept everything hidden, and it was hidden in his drawer with a bunch of pictures of his uh, mother, a lot of family photos, if you will, personal safe stuff that's not online. Uh, we also learn a key detail that uh, Santiago was playing both sides. So he was playing both the Dark Army and I guess in essence, maybe with E Corp, or really wasn't sure what the other side was, like actually being an FBI agent I, I mean, I don't know what they mean by both sides. So definitely he was not forthcoming with um, the dark army with what's going on. He's part of the reason why they were never caught for the 5-9 hack um, and some of the other things that have happened since. Uh, but uh, as they're going around, Irvin shows up. He starts talking about, you know, this book that he just read. And he says, it was okay, you know, it didn't have like, you know... You can have a weak opening, and the meeting can be okay, but you got you got to stick the landing. You know, you got to have a wow ending. That's what makes a great book. And Elliot freaks out. He's like, "Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! What is he gonna do?" And Irvin just clocks him and goes, "You know, whatever scheme you're thinking up, stop. It's best for you to do the easy way out and come with me." So he realizes if Irvin's here, then that means that they must have Darlene, and he has to go with them. And so that's, that's, it's at that point I'm going to stop there. Um, I found it very interesting that the Mr. Robot and Elliot are actually teaming up, that they're actually being truthful with one another, um, that they're, you know, kind of back on the same page, if you will, S somewhat the, the way they were uh, in season two a little bit. Um, they're not too much in conflict and trying to get and save his sister Darlene. I found it very intriguing and interesting that the... <laughs> Irvin showed up at Santiago's place, which makes me think that they they're monitoring a lot of different places at all at the same time. So they have a the Dark Army has a very wide uh, breadth or depth of I don't know spies or handlers or maybe cameras or something for them to see Elliot at uh, Santiago's apartment and then get Irvin to go there or at least predict that Elliot was going to be at Irvin's apartment. I mean, Santiago's apartment and Irvin showing up. So it, it, I found that very, uh, a little interesting to think about. Uh, it also shows just, to, you know, the the wealth of resources, like I said, uh, the Dark Economy possesses, but maybe not, um, well, they're very extremely strategic 
and very almost kind of militaristic like chessboardy they might not be so flexible in their imagination and we'll get back to that part when we kind of get towards the end so I think I want to get into the Angela stuff right now um, just cover the whole thing now Angela's story kind of takes place at the same time as Elliot's particularly towards the end when Darlene and Elliot are and Dom are in the barn and they're about to be killed and stuff and Angela gets the big revelation that everyone's been speculating since season two so um, so we finally find out that Philip Price is her father um, and that he's been a distant father that he her mother didn't want him in her life and he respected that to some extent the only reason why he broke away from that respect if you will of being actually involved in her existence was the fact that why Rose you know fucked with her mind that she wasn't going to work uh, her apartment was you know completely trash she's having a psychological breakdown that she had the you know the victims of the 71 building attack in her apartment that she's you know gone crazy and he feels you know partially responsible not fully responsible but partially responsible and Angela kind of calls out on him on it. it was like why do you care what does it matter to you why is this all happening basically and you know he reveals that he's um her biological father that the whole five nine that the attack that she's a part of that was all for pettiness that the 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 thing that white rose keeps talking about her plan that angela thinks that she needs to protect or tell white rose about that that, that she needs to find white rose and let her know that people are coming for her, her plan um it's bullshit it's a delusion and she's had it for years and this and white rose has gone and killed murdered numerous people to keep it going but it it doesn't exist it's not going to happen it's it's the in the mind of a crazy person and everything that's happened was a dig at phil price and pettiness and and just starts breaking down further because you know she openly acknowledges to him that she's responsible for those people's deaths and he says you you're going to have to live with it and she asks for vengeance she asks for retribution and philip price says you're just gonna have to live with what you've done there there are no moves there's there's nothing left you know fundamentally the reason why he protected you know angela and got involved with her life and not just simply you know taking her to the place because she had a breakdown was because she tried to interfere with white rose's uh washington township plant with the lawsuit with those inspections white rose doesn't want those inspections for whatever reason whatever the device is she does not want that to happen and angela was going to mess it up and he was you know white rose was going to kill her and so philip price intervened and because of that inter intervention you know 71 buildings blew up because of that pettiness if you will because of that sacrifice i guess he he made to protect his flesh and blood and so it'll be interesting to see now that angela you know knows that she's philip price's daughter if she has any resources if she accepts what she has done for the 71 buildings and she goes after white rose goes after the washington township plant um for retribution for vengeance if you will because you know in the end you know her mother died because of the washington township plant to white rose promised that she was going to get her mama back that didn't happen and three all those people died you know there was a promise that there was a, a evacuation plan and it didn't happen so uh now she's a murderer she's lost her mother um you know she's lost herself in essence um i think she might rise up to be back up to the villain chart list i mean she's still there because she's a mass murderer but uh she might rise up and go after the whole everyone thinking that dark army versus f society might be angela versus the dark army it'd be interesting to see if she's able or capable of using utilizing philip price's resources in some fashion or even uh e corpse resources or evil corpse resources in some fashion as her position within the company um i think that would be the the wrinkle in everything if you will um uh, i do think that she has the fortitude to do something like that if that is something that the direction they're going and i would like to see that i would really like to see that 
but um, I'll save the rest of that, some of those, uh, my other thoughts um, for my season four prediction episode. But that's pretty much where Angela is at. We know that she, Philip Price is her father, that she's basically hit rock bottom with her mental breakdown and that she may rise up to seek some kind of retribution for what has occurred with the death of all those people. Uh, so there's no Tyra Wellick in this episode, even though he's mentioned he, he's not seen. Um, that takes us to Dom. So Dom got booted off the case by Santiago last episode. Um, basically she's feeling kind of like shit because, you know, she slept with Darlene. Darlene tried to get into Sentinel. She's now getting kicked off the case. It, you know, it's kind of stall of her career. She's, you know, this close to figuring all this out. And she does her paperwork and hands it off to the case officer, the new one. And the guy's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And she goes, well, maybe Santiago didn't tell you. He goes, I'm about to leave to San Francisco. I don't know what this is about. And that's when Dom realizes she's been played. So she goes and tries to find Darlene, tries to find Santiago, realizes that Santiago took Darlene and tracks him down to, this garage, to the garage. Santiago had taken Darlene out of the cell that she was in or the interview room taking the videotape of her confessing that there is encrypted data about undoing the 5-9 hack and it's going to take take him take her somewhere. That somewhere we find out is the, the, the farmhouse that uh, the Swede, Tyra Wellick, hid out. Uh, but before we get there, Dom confronts him and they have a conversation. She's like, why are you taking Darlene? And he goes, well, the ADA wants her um, in holding, so I'm taking her personally. She goes, really? Well, let's take it, you know, let me give a call and, and see what's going on. I don't, I don't think you should be doing this, you know. He goes, you know, take it, you know, the ADA. He goes, well, I'll just call the ADA. And then <laughs> that's when he realizes, you know, he needs to take her out. They have a conversation. She's, like, feeling it out, trying to figure out what the hell is really going on here. And he, he knocks her out. Poor Dom has a glass shot, just boom. Knocks her out. Puts her in the car, locks her up, basically ties her up. And so now Dom and Darlene are in the back of Santiago's car going on to, to eventually the uh, Swedish hideout location, uh, the Dark Army controlled farmhouse. And Dom wakes up after having been knocked out and she, she realizes just what a dirtbag Santiago is. And he is a dirtbag. I know people are feeling very sympathetic and we'll get into why a little, in a moment, but he's a dirtbag, okay? He's a dick, as, he's a dickhead as Irvin says. Um, She's like, you you know, he hid in the room while they were all dying downstairs. He got Cisco killed. He's been behind a lot of this. You know, he's just a piece of shit. A traitor. There's nothing he could have done. And he's like, you, you don't understand if you knew what the power they have and, 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 and stuff like that. And Tom's not having any of it. She's like, she's like, I'm going to take you down. I'm going to figure, she's trying to figure this all out. Uh, they... You know, they eventually get to the farmhouse where uh, Elliot arrives with Irvin. And I found this very interesting, um, and I noted this. Uh, when Elliot gets out of the car, so does Mr. Robot get out of the car. And they actually show Mr. Robot, like, you know, open the door and stuff like that. And normally when we see Mr. Robot, he is as Elliot. But this is one of the first times I think I've seen, or maybe I just haven't, really notice it before where you kind of see in Mr. Robot's actions kind of simultaneously as Elliot much so much in the first season but it was just a very strong visual cue or, or showing if you will of that type of action where you know he's opening the car you know exiting the other car at the same time and it was just I found it very amusing so Irvin said you know Elliot looks at the farmhouse kind of I don't know he eyes it a little bit and then he follows Irvin to the barn where there's Santiago. I think there's like three. So there's uh, two Dark Army peoples and Leon. And they have Dom and Darlene. And Irvin's a little perplexed because Dom is there. And he goes, who's this plus one while she's there? And he goes, That's, this is not a problem. But this, but this time you guys need to clean my mess, you know. I've been mean, cleaning up your messes and I'm tired of this. You need to clean up this. This She can be taken care of. Uh, but you, you got to help me clean up the mess of Darlene, basically, of uh, this uh, encrypted file stuff. And I was like, mm, okay. And he, he wishes to Dom to come with him. And they're going out in the woods. And Dom is trying to persuade, saying, you, you don't have to do this to Irvin. This is unnecessary. 
you know, trying to plead for her life. And Irvin turns around and he goes, just shut up. <laughs> just stop talking. <laughs> so they go out to where uh, the axe wood chopping stuff is. And, you know, Irvin takes his clothes off, takes his tie off, you know, takes his shirt off, I should say. And picks up, he picks up the axe. And Dom is like, you really don't have to do this. This is unnecessary, you know, trying to plead with his life. And he goes, you know, it'd be much easier if you just look up in the sky, miss. Just look up in the sky. And then he takes his axe and he swings it into Santiago's chest. And Don gets some blood splatter. As, and, he, and he goes, you know, this guy is getting on my nerves. He's on his last thread. You know, he's just a real buck up, real dick. And he starts chopping on him. Uh, prior to that, you know, Santiago's trying to plead for Dom saying you don't have to kill her you can we can turn her and Dom is like no you can't turn me I'm going to tell everybody I'm not a traitor I'm not a traitor and Irvin is like yeah we're not going to be able to turn her she she's not going to do it and but you know it was very surprising to me I wasn't expecting him killing Santiago but it does make sense he he has made some mistakes. He's been defiant to the Dark Army. He, as, as Irvin says, is a dickhead. And so Irvin as chopping up uh, Santiago, and he tells Dom, like, look, you're going to work for us. You're going to be our new mole. And she's like, no, you might as well kill me now. And, and that's when Irvin goes, you know, what's your youngest family member's name? Your brother, your father, you know, he basically threatens her family as he starts whacking um, them with the, the axe. He goes, imagine what this, this is them, basically. You, you're going to do it. And Dom's going to do it. You know, her family is being threatened uh, by the uh, the Dark Army. They're going, they know all their names. They know their locations. They, they, they're going to kill her family. And he goes, you know, you can go back to the bar now. And uh, he goes, the rest of this is just for me. And he starts just really getting into just chopping up Santiago, if you will. Uh, so Dom gets to the barn. And, you know, she's no longer cuffed. Uh, she walks over and she walks over to the Dark Army side to where Leon is uh, in the barn. And Darlene's like, what the fuck? And Elliot's there. And... Mr. Robot had tried to persuade Elliot to try to, with Dom and then were gone, to try to do something, to try to escape. And, and Elliot was like, no, um, we need to stay here. And he goes, you know, we're going to see White Rose. And Elliot was like, you played that card. And Mr. Robot was like, Elliot, you played that card. She's, she doesn't want to see you. And she goes, but she's seeing me now and looks up at the camera above them. And he goes, look, look at them all around. They're waiting for somebody important, Okay. And she's gonna come and they're gonna talk. That important person it happens to turn out to be Grant. So Grant comes, uh, the attache, the uh, right hand man of White Rose, and he, who's been pursuing Elliot, it comes uh, with the two additional Dark Army personnel. Uh, Irvin's been waiting for them. He's actually had finished, I guess you can say, chopping up Santiago to bits. Um, he's cleaning himself up. He says, you know, everybody's in the barn. Oh, uh, by the way, bad news is I've, I've had to kill Santiago. He was a dick. Look, I got you a new mole. Uh, she's lower down the pole, but she's way more competent and way better. And he goes, I'm leaving. And Grant's like, what are you doing? We have work to go do. And he goes, oh, you know, I'm going to finally take that sabbatical, go to Barbados, go to the beach, finish my book. And Grant kind of gets like deep in the base like you know we have work to do you can't do that and Irvin just comes up to him he goes does she make some overtures it's the same you know spontaneous overtures hmm you know I used to be you years ago I think she's going to be good with me and walks away and gets into his car basically and so that leaves Grant there <laughs> he composes himself indicates to the, 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 the henchman that is, you know, go to the barn. So Elliot, you know, stands up. Grant's there. And Grant is like, uh, so I've had a chance to look at your stage three plan, Mr. Elliot. And Elliot's like, bullshit. You know, there is no stage three. And Grant's like, it's fine. glad we would be honest with one another. And Elliot's like, you know, what's my woes? And Grant is like, you know, um, basically, you know, he, they have no expressed interest about the five-line hack. 
you can reverse it all you want. They don't really care about that. Uh, Elliot goes, well, I control your servers. I have your information. And if anything happens to my sister, uh, I'm going to release it to the world. And Grant goes, now, I thought we were going to be honest. And then Elliot starts telling them her business about, you know, the Russians are hired to ha hack uh, the DNC, about getting Philip Price to annex the Congo, uh, basically telling the details. And from Grant's face, he, and, and Mr. Robot was telling him, you're pissing him off. Don't do this, Elliot. Uh, Grant was like, well, we can survive a leak, but you can't survive a bullet in your throat. You know, their time is over. And so Elliot is kind of scrambling. And he goes, you need me. I can I can do what you have been, not been able to do for months or have chosen not to do for months in one day. And he's looking up to White Rose. He goes, I can, I can move your plant. I can get it past the Coast Guard. And Grant... Um, doesn't believe him he goes it's you know it's finally time for this to happen the dark army like puts him on the ground leon already has a gun to darlene's head and then leon gets a text and grant is kind of like um having his villain moment if you will he's been very irritated by elliot and grant says you know time is over um you're very good at g games but there's no more games to play and he's about to kill Elliot himself, and that's when, and Leon, which is very funny because there's a joke that Mr. Robot was saying to try to see if they can escape, was like, you know, Leon's good with a knife, but maybe he's not good with a gun. Turns out Leon is very good with a gun. He shoots uh, the other Dark Army guy that was holding Darlene, shoots the two that were ho holding Elliot, shoots the one that was in the back, and holds his gun at Grant. And... Grant looks at Leon like very perplexed and his phone, Grant's phone's ringing and Leon says, that's for you. And what it was, was, you know, Elliot said he can get the Washington Township plant device out. Those are the magic words for White Rose. And White Rose called him and said, you know, you've always been jealous of Elliot's abilities. You never could see my vision through, you know, and I will find you when this is all over and that she loved him. And Grant knew that meant that this is over, <laughs> that Elliot's going to basically live. And I'm not sure if there's been a translation of what he said to Elliot, but he kills himself, which is what operatives of the Dark Army do. And I guess by being dismissed by White Rose in that way, he knew that that, that was the end of it. So he kills himself. So everyone's dead. The only person that's alive is Leon, Dom, Darlene and Elliot and Leon goes and gets uh, the computer Elliot's computer Opens it up and says, you know, you made a promise now you need to fulfill it So Elliot starts doing his hacking thing and he basically tells him You know that humanitarian aid packages are able to get out of the harbor the Coast Guard's landing through That's the way to go and there's a bit of a caveat before that, you know Grant was like How do you think you could do with the Washington Township plant? Uh, something that an army of hackers like yourself could not do. And Elliot says, because I can. I'm that good. You need me. You need me. I can help you. And it was that pleading and stuff. And I think a lot of people had a problem with this. I personally don't have a problem with it. Um, if you think about it, just like inventions and businesses all the time, look, for example, at Bitcoin. Bitcoin was created in essence, potentially, possibly by one individual. Uh, anonymous, pseudo-anonymous, or un completely anonymous individual, if you will. He created something that people, many people, for years and decades, a digital currency that can transact on the internet. Uh, a storage value of, 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 of information and wealth through electronics that other people have been attempting to do for decades. And this one individual or group of individuals uh, for the most part, people think it's just one. Uh, this person did it. Uh, we see it all the time with great inventions. Uh, Post-it notes from, you know, Romy and Michelle's high school reunion. You know, if you think about it, just a little piece of paper and a glue. You know, a certain, you know, just a little, for, instead of having big old pads, you have just a little square piece. 
uh, just little concepts and stuff like that where people may have the same skill set as everybody else, but they have the imagination, the vision, which may have been lacking within the Dark Army because they're so st so strategic and so cerebral. So about the ones and zeros that they are not seen and taken back and looking at not only the forest or the trees, but the sky and the rabbits and the, and the little birds and, and seeing everything and seeing the great grand potential. Not just what's right in front of them, but for, you know, a thousand years on out. So I think that's potentially why Elliot was very successful in coming up with this concept and idea. Two, humanitarian aid packages. He's a very, like, kind of a very social awareness thing. And Elliot's a very good, strong social engineer, even if he's not personally very apt at the socialness of human interactions. He's very aware of how people work and engage and interact. So I wouldn't be surprised if he's aware of this. It's just the methodology of um, getting things out because it's been known for humanitarian packages for transporting, transporting illicit goods and stuff like that before. Um, but also just a social awareness where people are willing to allow for, if you're doing something good, to go by. Um, that, that, that feeling or awareness, oh, that's the Red Cross, that's, it's okay, you know, just kind of like, oh, Red Cross, Psst. kind of, and not even take second glance in something and taking advantage of that. So he does come up with a proposal, he uh, submits it to the Dark Army, Leon tells him, you know, if this doesn't go through, you know what's going to happen, and Ellie's like, it's going to work, he goes, you know, I was always rooting for you, and, and he leaves, which leaves, um, Thom, Darlene, and Elliot together. And Darlene's like, what are we going to do now? And he goes, well, we're going to reverse the hack. So Dom gives him access to, I guess, subsuming at Santiago's computer, using her uh, badge to get into Sentinel, and Elliot was able to obtain the information, everything that's, that needs to be done to undo the hack. And Dom tells him, you know, I'm not doing this for you. And walks out of the car. Darlene tries to go to Dom. And Dom is like, you're a terrible person. You're a terrible person. I want you to know that. And I want you to have agony and, you know, basically death and destruction happen to you all the time for the rest of your existence. You know, I've lost everything because of you. And she sort of kind of walks away. Um, we eventually have uh, Dom... Uh, I guess Dom must have dropped him some point in New York and said, you get off here and, and said, fuck it. And <laughs> uh, went back to the office, I'm assuming, because uh, we don't see Dom for the rest of the episode. Uh, so Darlene and Elliot are on the subway and they're kind of taking in what just happened to them. And Darlene wanted to know, why did you ask me about Kevin McAllister, about the snowman? And Elliot was like, you know, that's the day that dad tossed me out the window and Darlene was like, no, that's not what happened. He goes, yeah, it is. And Darlene tells him the truth. No, you were looking for a camera. Uh, Dad comes in. You freak out. You start swinging your baseball bat. I was hiding in the closet. Um, and then you kept threatening you were going to toss yourself out, and you did. And Elliot was like, oh, that's not what happened. That's not how I remembered it. And Darlene was like, that's not what happened. That's how happened and I can remember for you so they do part you know it's like I'm gonna go ahead and go do this Darlene's like you know okay everything's gonna be fine um, so Darlene goes her own way um, Elliot you know stays on the subway to talk to Mr. Robot and he basically confronts Mr. Robot and says you know I know that you know Basically, there was revealed that while Romero was spying on them, he wasn't the one who exported the keys, the the keys to the hack. Everything that happened, he knows. I know you're the one who did it, and I wanted to know why. And Mr. Robot basically says, because that's something you would do. You know, what if the revolution failed? What if we needed a back back backup plan? You would have thought of something as a way to undo everything and fix it. And so that's why he did it. And this is when they have kind of like a mutual agreement of understanding. Mr. Robot asks, you know, you know, whatever it is that you plan on doing next. You know, he tries to initially persuade him not to, to, to undo it. Just to wait. Wait a day. Wait. But Elliot's like, no, it, it needs to be done. You know, Mr. Robot says, you know, I want to be part of the next stage, the next plan, if you will. 
and you know whatever it is we're doing and Elliot says it's the mantra that we have had you know the one percent of the one percent you know has revealed himself and he's going to take them all down I we'll get into that um so Mr. Roglat reveals that it's on the blank disc um you know which picture it is you know the stenographic picture with the keys and everything and it will undo the hack so Elliot does that. He finds the picture. Of course, it's the Back to the Future 2 picture with Elliot dressed as Barney McFly and uh, Mr. Robot, you know, Edward Alderson dressed up as Doc. Um, he extracts the encryption keys. He uh, extracts the information from Romero's drive, pairs the two together, and sends. And so, in essence, the hack has been undone. And that's it for Elliot you know that's the end of the story for Elliot uh, the end of this show if you will uh, we do get a teaser I will get into the teaser in a second um, I don't mind the reset I don't mind that the focus is not necessarily on evil corp but now on to people like Philip Price like Wright Rose I just don't know how they're gonna go about it this time you know uh, Philip Price pointed out a very observational and very key point about the whole entire revolution itself. Uh, leaders inspire the agenda. And is Elliot going to be capable as a leader to inspire the agenda? Because so far, he dictated it, and everyone that was part of it is pretty much dead or damaged, you know. Angela's damaged. Darlene is to some extent damaged. Dom got caught up into this, even though she wasn't part of it, but she's a byproduct of it. All the people from the background as Elliot was walking to his apartment from the subway after having the conversation with Mr. Robot, the trash in the street, the uh, martial law with the uh, National Guard telling everyone they have to be in their, their homes by 9 p.m. walking in the streets saying that mantra, the, the soup type of kitchen, the... Uh, people on the sidewalk watching Superman 2 as Superman sees Lois dead and reverses time by spinning the earth back. Um, you know, uh, that's, their, that's our entertainment, watching movies. Uh, just the rubbish and the darkness is a little bit darker in New York. Um, and somehow reversing all this, you know, the storefronts are all closed. We see that more when Darlene tours the teaser. Uh, that type of damage, you know. Moby and Trenton, their families are wrecked. They're accused of being terrorists and have ties to Iran. There could potentially be a war because of the 71, all the people that died in the 71 building attack. Uh, Cisco's dead. You know, um, Romero, not really sure how Romero died, really, to be perfectly honest with this show. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, how is he going to inspire agenda? Tyra Wellick to some extent, a byproduct. Well, Tyrell is very much a part of his own doing, but still, uh, what is Elliot gonna do? You know, how is he gonna inspire the agenda? And what exactly will that agenda be? Cause it can't just be this, we're gonna take out the 1%, 1%. Is it gonna be very target specific? Cause it, initially the, the, the target specific was Evil Corp and look what that, ha that happened. Is it gonna be much broader? Um, It'll be interesting to see. Uh, maybe I'll talk some of my thoughts about the season four, but that's where my qualms were for this episode. Is like, you know, I understand how they survived. You know, the magic words, watch the township plant, basically. And I think the, this whole thing of, of having Grant go after Elliot was a test on the part of White Rose to see if Grant would let Elliot live for the sole purpose of protecting her plant. If he truly believed in white vision, if the moment Elliot said that he could solve the problem, he should have stopped, see what the solution was, if it was a viable solution, let him implement it, and then kill him. You know, uh, because then the plant would have been saved, the plant would have gotten out, you know, uh, the protection of the plant is all. Which goes back to my, one of my theories that the Washington Township plant is the MacGuffin. But we'll see if that actually pans out. But it seems so far three seasons in that it seems to be that is the case of more anything else. Of not time travel, not AI, not a cobalt uh, fusion uh, energy thing, but uh, a MacGuffin. So we get to the teaser. And I actually like the teaser, but some people might consider it a jump the shark moment. 
were one of the most favorite characters from season one and where people were wondering where this per person was at. And some people forgot about them thinking he was dead or something was that Vare, the brave traveler, has returned. Uh, Darlene is walking to Elliot's apartment, going to meet up with Elliot. She's uh, talking to uh, this lady of the night, the prostitute. They're having a conversation about the state of the world. Darlene's a little bit more hopeful, saying, you know, I think things are going to get better. I think, you know, E Corp's going to recover their data. And the lady was like, do you not know basic economics? Do you not know the reality of the world? Even if, you know, that were to occur, you know, in e, e Corp is, you know, in the shits right now. Uh, what's that $80,000 debt going to do? You know, my father lost his house and his business because of all this, you know. How's that going to change anything, if you will? And, you know, Elliot, uh, she says, well, maybe it would just be a start, get the economy going. And she goes, you know, you can't be that naive. And it, it does bring up a point. It's going to bring back debt. Are the people that, you know, during that time going to still owe the debt, the interest rates, um, the restored value, if you will, of demonstrating ownership. What about the losses that have already occurred? What is that all going to mean? You know, are people going to be forgiven? Uh, is E-Corp still going to be held liable or accountable for all of this? Uh, it'd be interesting to see how this plays out because we saw what how much of this played out with the 2008 crash, how nobody was held really liable. Yes, there were fines paid, but they weren't really paid back. It was all manipulation. Nobody went to jail. You know, basically they did all these bad loan stuff, yet somehow they were still able to take the property and keep it, uh, foreclosing on people they shouldn't have foreclosed on, all sorts of garbage stuff, and nobody was held accountable, really. But the company, Bank of America, all of them came out stronger for it, and the taxpayers ended up paying, quite frankly, the bulk of the, the damage, if you will, not to mention the fact that the, the slow progression of an entire generation being uh, completely behind in any kind of markers or indication of growth and actually being further behind than say their grandparents, you know, being so thrown back economically uh, in progression, a great chunk of them, if you will. Yet the elite, if you will, have skyrocketed further than before. But, you know, they, these are things that maybe that will be addressed further, which I think well, it's nice that it had been in the background, the decay of New York. It'd be nice to see some of the ramifications addressed even deeper and further uh, in Mr. Robot, where you still see, even with the reversal of the 5-9 hack, you still see the, the economic doldrums, if you will. Um, so Darlene's walking with the, the prostitute. They're going across the crosswalk. This car almost hits them. They say some words to it. It keeps going, and then eventually it pulls up in front of... Uh, Darlene's brother's place and as they were talking so the prostitute's like oh those vatos they're, they're pulling up there I'm getting out of here they look like trouble basically so Darlene's just kind of standing there waiting to see what's going out go on they come out um, <laughs> and Vera he's just always talks in this very weird funny fashion but it does make sense if you have the context of what he's, he's saying he goes you know, I went, I, you might be able to help me, sister, you know, trying to light in the dark corner of my mind. <laughs> she goes like, what the fuck are you? And he was like, I'm just a brave traveler here returning home. <laughs> so I don't know what that means for the show. Having a return of a, a villain, if you will, a different kind of villain. Um, I'm pretty sure Vera knows that Elliot is behind of all, all the hacks and stuff like that from the sheer fact that Elliot got him out of jail. And maybe in a few conversations that Shayla may have expressed to Vera about Elliot, uh, he's not an idiot. I, he figured it out, if you will. But I'm not quite sure why his return is, other than maybe um, the economy is such, such shit that nobody's actually really looking for him. Um, so, of course, he would come to Elliot. He would come to Elliot first to, I don't know, rebuild his empire. I don't know. It would be interesting to see how this all plays out. Um, not sure if it's going to go well or anything like that, what's going to happen, but it would be intriguing. I, I look forward to it. I like uh, I like that character. I like the actor. and I like the dynamic that he and Elliot had. Um, we'll see. Um, we'll see. I'll see it save some of my thoughts for season four, but for the most part, everyone's theories went pfft. Uh, Dom didn't, and Darlene didn't die in a plane. Philip Price and Angela didn't die in a plane. Philip Price didn't die at all. Um, Tyra Wellick didn't become CEO of E Corp. 
as of now. Who knows, maybe that will come true. Uh, wasn't really much of an F Society versus Dark Army battle, really. Um, everyone pretty much lived, except for Santiago. Uh, I, I have no sympathy for Santiago. Um, and I might not end up having sympathy for Dom, unless she come, somehow figures her, I, I hope she figures a way of redemption and um, out, if you will. Um, I think Santiago did something for him to be within the Dark Army's uh, hairs. I, I don't know. I just, I just don't have sympathy for him. I think he did what he did. It was very selfish. Uh, he could have gone to the FBI. He could have took the risk. He could have tried to protect his family in some fa fashion. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. We'll see. When things go turn out with Dom, uh, I might save my thoughts for season the season four uh, theories. But yeah, that's the end of the episode. That's the end of everything. Um, I have to wait another year for uh, Mr. Robot to show up. Uh, maybe this time it'll come out in the spring. Maybe it'll, all right, maybe it'll come out in the fall again. Um, don't know, but it's gonna be a big void. Um, in my TV box, if you will, her TV listing and watching for now. But for the most part, I enjoyed this season. I think it's one of the best seasons on television. I know that Christian Slater got a, a nod at the Golden Globes. I'm hoping come Emmy time so there'll be more recognition for this show, for this writing, for its cinematography, for its music, uh, for its acting, particularly the women uh, on the show have elevated the show significantly. Um, yeah, I, I'm hoping some nominations come come Mr. Robot's way. Uh, it would be nice to see Mr. Robot on Netflix and not just on like Amazon, iTunes, and Google Play to buy. Uh, that way, I mean, there's other USA Network shows on Netflix. That way that the show can get a broader audience. We've seen other television shows when they hit Netflix or a streaming service like that. Uh, but particularly, mostly Netflix. Um, the, the ratings jump, the live viewings ratings jump, people, more people are talk about it they're able to binge it's a very easily bingeable show there's not that many episodes so you're not watching like 22 episodes per season you could probably do this in like a in a weekend really um but for the most part like i said i, I really enjoyed the show hope you enjoyed my reviews um this is it for now um uh, this is uh i'll be doing a season four um theory episode I am participating in a closing thing. I need to get back with people about it. Um, I'll talk about it in the season four theories um, about different podcast shows talking about um, a reviewers of Mr. Robot talking about it. But yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, so this is it. Uh, thank you all for listening. Thank you all for watching. Um, like, comment, share, uh, subscribe if you like, uh, if you're on YouTube or through the podcast. And until next time, this is Hiroja Shive. Uh, logging off.